Hey guys, this is Magic here, and it's time to talk about the really odd thing that's going on right now. Out of nowhere, Wizards is like, hey, we're reprinting uh, Plane Chase, you know, Plane Chase Anthology. Cool. In fact, next year they're doing Arch Enemy. I mean, it makes sense. It was, it's like a side game thing, kind of like a game modifier. It's not really like a new format. I mean, you guys know what Plane Chase is, but honestly, I'll say 90 to 95% of players that I talk to have never heard of Plane Chase. It came out in 2012, and not everybody at my store has been playing since 2012, and a lot of them back then didn't give a crap about it back then either. Hell, if you don't know what it is, go watch my video on it. So out of nowhere, they do this, you know, not very popular format that basically nobody's playing, and they decide to reprint it, which in itself is weird, but, you know, it's a cool format. It's really fun, so the fact that they bring it around again gives people the opportunity to acquire it and then play it, and maybe a couple people get back into it, but it's not like some huge moneymaker. I mean, this isn't Modern Masters we're talking about. I mean, this is kind of equivalent to like a From the Vault or something where it's just a couple go out, a couple people are interested in it, and it's supposed to kind of maintain a high collector's price, kind of a premium, and there's not very many to go around. And that's exactly what, from what I heard, they told the WPN stores. They're like, this is a very, very limited small print run. You know, it's WPN only, which automatically implies it's a small print run. So get your orders in and everybody kind of said, oh crap, I don't want to run out. And this is the kind of product, honestly, you'd hold for like five years, not hold, but like have on the shelves. Like you don't expect to sell out on it on day one. This isn't a fast moving standard booster box kind of thing. So you order, you know, a dozen plain chase anthologies for your store and you assume in the next couple of years, somebody will get curious and want to play it. They'll have heard about it on Desolator Magic's channel. They'll be like, oh, that sounds awesome. So they'll come in, buy it and want to play it with their friends. But, you know, it's not the most exciting product release because they know it's not going to sell very quickly. Oh, but if you can disassemble the four included decks uh, and turn them into very valuable singles that people want for, like, Commander and Modern, uh, that's the other reason it would fly. Unfortunately, this is an anthology set, and they printed the four included pre-made decks exactly the way they were the first time because that's what anthology means. I assume. Honestly, I'm not going to look it up in the dictionary. So th it's not like they chose what cards go in this, you know, where they carefully like choose what goes in Modern Masters number three coming out soon, you know, to make sure that it sells, but to make sure it's not outrageous. Nope, they printed this exactly verbatim as it was in 2012. So this was just designed to not sell very well. So what did they do? They printed the holy hell out of it. I think you could actually rebuild a scale model of Disneyland out of Plane Chase Anthology boxes. If they took all the Plane Chase Anthology boxes that they created and stacked them on top of each other, it would be the first space elevator. If Wizards had printed off one more single box of Plane Chase Anthology, the sheer density and mass of them would have collapsed them into a black hole. I believe that's actually the only reason they stopped printing them at the quantity that they did. So why would Wizards be stupid enough to run off like a billion trillion copies of something that basically nobody wants? Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out because honestly, the whole thing about Plane Chase doesn't make any sense. Now, let me start with one thing that really, really, really doesn't make any sense. Plane Chase is a modifier. It is not a format. They call it a format, but it's not. It's just a simple game mod. It's like a meta game. Okay, there's Standard and then there's Commander. 100 cards, you know, unique, you pick out a commander, has to be legendary, used to be different mulligan rules, it's a different format than standard. Plane chase, you add on to anything. You can play standard plane chase, modern plane chase, which I wouldn't recommend, commander plane chase, but I absolutely would recommend that, that's crazy. You can just add it to any other game, it's like a, like a little add-on expansion thing. Nothing wrong with that, that's beautiful, that just makes it more accessible. So that being the case, why the heck did they include four pre-made decks? I want to use my own decks to play Plane Chase. Legitimately, no joke, I only want to use my own decks to play Plane Chase. I don't like pre-made decks in general. I like deck building. Big surprise there to everybody. Why the hell are they forcing me to buy these other four decks? I don't want them. I just want the Plane Chase cards. Like, I'm the customer. I know what I want. Here's what I want, wizards. And then they print something else. That's just stupid. I'd, I mean, the only, like, thinking about it for a long time, the only logic I came up with was they want more of my money. And based on recent actions in the last couple months, are you really surprised? <coughs> MTG, oh, treasure chest. <coughs> oh, excuse me, allergies. Oh, and Eternal Masters 2.0, too. Let's throw that in there. <coughs> Whatever. Basically, if I want the just the plain cards so I could play plain chase, just the, the cards and the dice... Uh, no, I have to also buy the four decks. And that perfectly justifies the $149.99 MSRP. 
Yeah, no, it doesn't. I didn't buy one. I did not acquire one. I wanted to play Plane Chase. I love it. It's one of my favorite formats of all time, even though it's not a format. I didn't buy it. That is too damn much money. That is more money than I have. Sorry. Rather buy an M15 to shoot freaking Chinese people. That sounds really racist out of context. <laughs> this is why you should follow me on Twitter. So for the people who wanted another copy of the deck, or, you know, the decks from way back when, um, or they were really interested in the singles in those decks, or they wanted those decks to mod them into commander decks, just whatever. If they wanted the decks, okay, sell the 150 version to those people, and then for like 50 bucks, sell me just the playing cards and the dice. I mean, Wizards, you can have it both ways. You can have the expensive version that some people will buy if they're interested, and then you can have the cheapy version that people like me will buy. Why didn't you split it up that way? Plane Chase was just one disappointment after another. I'm like, I heard about it, I heard the name, and I'm like, oh, cool, Plane Chase, awesome. I'm buying it. Boom. And I'm not going to have to pay much because I have a distributor. Yay. Yeah, selfish, I know. Then I found out, okay, it's WPN only. And I'm like, okay, whatever, WPN only. I can't order it at distributor wholesale. Um, I'm going to get it from my local gaming store. Then, after that, I heard the MSRP and the fact that it comes with four pre-made decks that I have no interest in, and I just said, screw it. I just gave up on it. So for the type of customer that I am, that was a massive failure. Sorry, wizards. So now, mystery number two, because I'm not going to get into the weird conspiracy stuff until later. If you're going to have a new format, and I use the word new and the word format very uh, generously, why not make a reason for people to buy it and play it? Okay, people were not showing up to FNM. FNM was flipping over to Modern at, at a lot of stores, or Commander, Draft, or whatever. Um, it was kind of affecting Kaladesh sales, I would think. According to the last Twitter poll, everybody is pissed about the state of standard. Nobody wants to play it right now. So what did they do? They reacted. They corrected. They actually made an intelligent corporate decision that benefits everybody. Four weeks of this thing called Standard Showdown. Wizard sponsored the prizes, sent them automatically to the LGS. They didn't have to invest anything further because obviously Standard's not doing well. It was brilliant. It was exactly the solution that they should have implemented. It went great. I was excited about it. Everybody had good things to say about it, except for the fact that three net decks dominate everything and standard is still garbage. Can't really fix that, but they did give people a reason to show up and play standard, these killer killer prizes. So where is the plane chase tournament? Where's like January plane chase day? Or plane chase week so that the LGS can hold it on whatever day they're free? Plane Chase Wednesday, where's the Wednesday Plane Chase tournament? The one time only or, or, or two times a month for one month, you know, just limited time Plane Chase tournament. Are you ready for the dumbest comparison I have ever made in my entire channel's history? Okay, so soccer or football for all of you Europeans. Hey, you want to know a secret? England named it soccer. So they invent a new type of soccer uh, where they use uh, two balls, multi-ball. It's like pinball. Seriously, I would watch that. People would watch that. Why is this not a thing? So they invent a new type of soccer called multi-ball soccer, and they throw out two soccer balls. There you go. New format of soccer. And then they don't televise it, and they don't hold any games. They don't schedule any events. But they really want to sell it. They want people to buy merchandise from the new leagues. They want to start new teams. They want to have, you know, just money come in from this new format. Oh, but they didn't, they didn't actually schedule any events or any tournaments. Like, what the hell is that? Like, you really think that's going to succeed? No, you got to actually make something. You got to give people a reason to play it. Say, hey, we just invented multiball soccer, and guess what? This year, the soccer Super Bowl, whatever the hell you call it. I'm going to get so much crap in the comment section for this. This year at the soccer multiball Super Bowl, we're giving away $10 million to the winning team. Oh, look, suddenly a whole bunch of teams just formed and people are watching it. If they just said, okay, we're going to have plane chase day, uh, a month after release, and the winners get foil plane cards. You know, like those oversized cards? Oversized foil plane cards. Plus, uh, I don't know, bonus boosters or some, some standard boosters, whatever. I don't know. Well, I think, one, they included four pre-made decks, so what are you going to do? Just outplay everybody else that's running the exact same deck? That would just be stupid. And two... You could only compete if you actually bought Plane Chase Anthology, which is really flippin' expensive. So I think for those two reasons, that's why they didn't hold the Plane Chase Day. So I'm not that confused by it, but still, let's be honest, nobody's playing Plane Chase. Nobody asked Wizards to reprint Plane Chase. They just kind of did it, and now there's a complete lack of, like, customer base for it. Mix that with the fact that they couldn't mod it a little bit to contain very heavily sought-after modern or commander cards, and you got a dead product. So they took the dead product and printed the hell out of it. 
Why did they do it? And I think I figured this out. Let's take um, two of the shortest print runs I've ever seen in my entire life. These are the, the smallest, most limited products that I've seen recently. One, the special edition uh, Thopter Pie Network holiday card. That was like, what, one per store or something? I mean, it was absurd. Then there's From the Vault. I have no idea what the allocation of that was. Didn't bother to look because it doesn't affect me. I'm not a WPN location. But I think really big stores got like, I don't know, 12 or something or 20. It wasn't a real high number anyway. The smaller stores I heard got like screwed. They got like four or something. I don't even know. So those are the two smallest print runs ever. Guess what? You go on eBay right now, boom, you can buy them. There's nothing they can do to keep them off of eBay, okay? There's nothing they can do to keep them out of the hands of non-WPN people, even by limiting, limiting it to WPN only. So what they do is they, they take limited print runs and they just lower the numbers to the point where they can reasonably sell them in WPN stores for a higher price. It's kind of limited availability everywhere and it's a little bit hard to get even with the eBay sales because at a certain point it's going to sell up to a higher price. I mean, that's just how supply and demand works. I mean, let's take Eternal Masters, for example. You couldn't get Eternal Masters below, what, 275 on release day on eBay? It was WPN only, and that didn't stop it from leaking, but at a certain point, it hit above the MSRP. So stores had no problem buying it for $138 per box or something like that at the distributor cost, and then selling it for $239.97 what, or whatever it was, I don't remember. 240 box basically, MSRP. They could clear it for 240. They could probably even honestly get 250. I believe I paid 255 if I'm not mistaken. I had to buy them retail too. So it works. It did work for Eternal Masters the first time because they lied about the second print run and blah blah blah. So that's that's a whole nother story, but the first print run did work. So plane chase, it makes sense. If you want to make sure that people can't just go on eBay and get it for $80, then you better really short print run it. So these WPN allocation only products. It doesn't make Wizards any money. I mean, it makes them some money, but come on. If you could sell a million, but instead you sell 100,000 because you want to suppress the numbers and keep the price high so that hobby stores can make money and stay in business, okay, that's the purpose of the WPN-only products. Standard, honestly, there's there's not that much money to be made in Standard. I mean, it's, it's a low-margin, high-volume kind of thing, so there kind of is money, but, you know, you get it. Now, limited print runs, like anything that ends in Masters or Anthology or any of that, Commander, those things, those make money. And by the way, Commander actually wasn't WPN only. So Plane Chase Anthology was supposed to guaranteed make people like $75 a box profit or $65, whatever, depends on your distributor. Uh, that is not what happened. They selected this particular WPN product and just the guy whose job it is at the print facility apparently hit control P, enter, and then fell asleep on the enter button and accidentally printed way the hell too much. Just kidding, there is no way in hell this was an accident. So why did they do it? Let's, let's follow the path here. Why was Eternal Masters so hard to get? Well, one, there was only one run. There was never a second wave. It didn't ever show up. And people thought, okay, Eternal, you don't mess with Eternal. Eternal's expensive. You don't want to kill the prices on that. You'll lose people the most amount of money. So they just underprinted it, the end. But what really happened, if you really know what's going on, is investors hoarded it. Even shop owners hoarded it. If your shop has like M10 boxes or like M11, M12, if they have those booster boxes sealed up on the wall to sell, uh, they're also holding some boxes of Eternal Masters. They didn't get those M10 boxes by, you know, chance. That means they hold stuff, they sell it later for a higher price. So everybody, large investors, they were buying up everything they could because they sit on it and they sell it later. And that's not completely evil. There's an evil side and there's a good side. So the good side is five years from now, people buying up, we'll just say Plain Chase Anthology, are ensuring the availability of Plain Chase Anthology. I mean, if, if nobody held on to it, you wouldn't be able to buy it even more than like a year from now. Nobody would have it. So they're doing a service to the people, and yeah, they're taking a little fee for it, but usually it's reasonable. Like, if you went to go buy a box of M12 right now, I mean, it'll probably cost you, what, flirting with 100, maybe a little over 100? You know, obviously higher than, like, 78 a box, which is probably close to what it costs. But people aren't going to store it, you know, and, and lose $10,000 in the meantime to hold it for a couple years, you know, five years. 
and then just sell it for the exact same price. Okay, they're going to mark it up a little and they're going to make a profit. It, that's just what it is. They're not really price gouging it, but they are ensuring the availability of, we'll say, M10 boxes. If for some reason you wanted to open M10, you can do it because of these investors. That's the silver lining. The problem is Eternal. Nobody could get their hands on Eternal because all the investors were buying them all up for like 220, 230, 240 a box. They were fine with that because they knew it was short. And then they all just held it and it never got to the people who actually wanted it, the actual customers and the actual players. So here's my theory. Wizards purposely screwed those people over. And here's why I think it, it's not even just a theory about Plain Chase Anthology, because they knew people would sit on it. It's also a bit of a pattern at this point. What did they do with Eternal Masters? They either tricked them by holding the second wave and, and you know, just holding it, or they literally reprinted a second wave to screw over these investors because they realized that nobody got their hands on it. And honestly, there was more money on the table because there's customers still asking for it. I mean, maybe Nintendo could learn something from this. If more people say, hey, I wanted a Nintendo Wii, but Planet Earth is sold out of them. Can you make some more? Maybe then they should make some more or they're leaving money on the table. And then there was a Wii shortage for two years. Seriously, Nintendo. Seriously. I mean, then like Amiibos. I mean, they've got a history of this. So I think that Wizards knew people were going to hold on to Eternal Masters because it's such a, a prestigious, elite, like foil force of will, never before seen in foil, you know, just crazy set that is guaranteed to be worth more in five years. It's a safe bet. So investors are going to just attack it. So what did they do? Second wave that sucker. What the hell do they owe to investors who are just, like, leeching money out of the game? That's what they're doing. They're taking money out of customers' pockets and putting it in their pocket, and then it doesn't go to wizards. And that's not the exact whole picture, but you get it. So they knew they are going to do that with Play and Chase Anthology. They knew they are going to do it with Eternal Masters. So boom, second wave of that on top of, holy crap, Play and Chase Anthology. Like, it was like stores, from what I heard, from local store owners and the internet, and just as a whole, store owners were like, oh, I'll take, I'll take 10. Okay, cool, we'll try to get to 10, and then Wizards uh, sent the distributor however the hell many they want. It's not the distributor asking how, like, hey, we'll take 10,000. No, Wizards says, you'll take 50,000, have a nice day, here's your bill. That's how that works, in case you're not familiar. So Wizards overprinted it, sent it to the distributors, and the distributors were like, okay, we gotta get rid of this now. So they're calling up shop owners, and they're going, okay, we know you ordered 10, would you like another 100? And so Slippery Steve's Discount Cards and Bail Bonds says, um, yeah, we ordered 10, 100 though, you say. We don't have 100 customers. I'll take an extra two. So was Wizards just purposely trying to screw over the distributors or what the hell's going on here? Like what would, what purpose would that serve? The distributors would like drop them as a product, like no joke. They'd have to start burning copies of Play Chase Anthology to heat their warehouse. That would be the only value of it. God, this video is getting weird, dude. No, here's what happened. Here's what actually happened. Word on the street, the whole word ahead of time was this is a WPN only product. That implies that there's not going to be that much to go around. So if you want to invest on it, you better start, you know, tugging some strings and calling some people to get as many as you possibly can. So people are in, oh my God, scarcity mode. So the shop owners, instead of ordering eight, they ordered 12, whatever. And then when they called more, you know, and said, hey, we have a hundred, they just said, no, we're good with 12. Hell, we were good with eight. Like you said, it was going to be short. So yeah, we got what we need, thanks. But for every 50 people they call that are legitimate store owners, you've got the people who are WPN decoy locations, basically. You know, they 99% of their products is sold online, but they have a little tiny hobby store, you know, that holds FNM just so that they can be a WPN location. And then they over order the hell out of everything and just use it as an excuse to sell stuff online. Yeah, those exist. They're kind of big. I know of about a dozen personally. Realistically, there's probably thousands. So those people, they their customer base is, you know, uh, 20 people that show up to FNM and 10,000 people on their website or on TCG Player or on eBay. I mean, you think Troll and Toad or like Card Kingdom or any of them are non-WPN locations? Hell no, they're not. But you think that their WPN allocation matches exactly the amount of people who show up for FNM? Oh, I think it's a little higher. So you guys know what I'm talking about when I say decoy locations. So those people get the call and they said, oh man, <laughs> okay, I'm going to get 24. I'm going to order 24. Boy, I hope they fill this one because I'm going to sit on, you know, 20 of those. 
I'm going to put four up in my store. I'm going to be fair about this. You know, I'm a WPN location, but I'm going to sit on 20. Then the distributor calls and says, hey, do you want 100 more? And they're like, <laughs> yes. And they're already planning their trip to the Bahamas because they're like, oh my God, 100? It's a miracle. It's raining money. And then like the next day they find out, wait a minute, distributors have like an extra million of these. Everybody's sitting on a hundred of these. Everybody got a hundred. My distributor doesn't just love me personally. Everybody got way the hell too many of these. So now if you're planning on sitting on Plain Chase Anthology for five years and then releasing it to people who give even less of a crap about Plain Chase at that point and have never heard of it, uh, this is not a liquid asset, okay? Like not everybody wants a box of M10, but really not everybody wants a Plain Chase Anthology, especially five years from now. So when you open up your 100 boxes that you thought were just, that you're the only person in the world holding 100, uh, no, you're not. They're, they're dead. You'll be lucky to liquidate them for the exact price you paid. The only hope is if the singles in the decks go up, and that goes back to why they truly included four pre-made decks in it. If it was just the plain chase, plain cards, it would have zero value two years from now. So the whole, oh, maybe the singles in those decks will go up and it'll save me, people know it's in this, they want the cards, maybe they'll try to get them through Plane Chase, or five years from now, instead of selling it as that product, I will literally open it and break it down, sell it as singles. Okay, now I'll invest in way the hell too many of them. And that's what I think Wizard's plan was this time. Fool everybody into thinking that it was going to be scarce as hell, even though people knew if it's scarce as hell, they want it, they want as many as they can get, and they want to sit on it. And then overload the hell out of it, really jumpy investors who can't see through their BS, jump on it, buy it, hold it, and then they all probably get screwed over because unless the singles go up, they're going to make nothing or uh, lose money on it. Very clever, wizards, and honestly, here, th this will shock you. Are you sitting down for this one? If you are sitting down, you honestly might want to put your trade table in the upright position and uh, lock your seatbelt. If you literally just did that, you have a nicer chair than I do. I completely support wizards in this. They should try to screw over these bottom-feeding parasite jerks who just sit there and steal money from the whole MTG community. I hate investors. If you want to invest so badly, go buy some bars of silver. Stay out of magic. We used to call these uh, in RuneScape way back in the day, merchers. They would do nothing productive in the game other than steal money from players. They would buy up all the gold bars on the whole server. And yes, I know if you heard that story, I was one of them. <laughs> At one point, I literally bought all the gold bars on the server in the entire game. All the servers. Yeah, I bought 110,000 gold bars. And then I resold them for 5 to 10% higher same day. I created a scarcity. I bought up every single last piece of coal, every single last piece of gold that was being mined in a day. And then I sold it a little bit higher. That's what investors do, except that they sit on the product a little bit longer. And like I said, it's not all bad. You know, they ensure availability of the product in the future. Great. Except that they're bottom-feeding scumbags who are pocketing money that shouldn't be coming out of the game's economy as a whole. So at the end of the day, screw those people. Screw investors. I hate them all. And just because I try to make five bucks by anticipating what cards might go up in standard doesn't make me an investor, okay? I'm not that scale of an investor. Once in a while, I'll pick up six play sets of a card if I'm sure it'll go up. Not a thousand, okay? I'm not Star City Games. I don't buy 10,000 fetch lands and then artificially increase the price, allegedly. They allegedly did that. Allegedly. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's solid proof, but allegedly. I think even they admitted they did it, but I'm still going to say allegedly. So if Wizards 1 makes way the hell more money printing plain chess anthology than they normally would have because they had buyers for that volume, and 2 completely screws over investors, I'm all for that. It would seem between Eternal Masters and Plague Chase Anthology, they are firing cannonballs, just warning shots across the bow of these pirate jerks. And they should be. They should try to eliminate these people from the game's economy. One less person pocketing a middleman fee means that more money goes into wizard's pockets, and I think they finally figured that out. You can't just release a product, have 20% of it or whatever get eaten up by investors, and then the customers are pissed because they, they had to pay way too much, they had to pay above MSRP because of this big shortage. Nah, fix the problem. Screw over the investors. Overprint everything. I am all for that. I mean, it makes Wizards more money, it's smart, and it fixes a problem. I mean, wh where's the downside? I mean, it's dishonest, but you know, whatever. I still think it's freaking hilarious. So in my opinion, I think that's what Wizards did. I think that's why the print, uh, print run was this big.
And all I hear lately on the message boards and the forums and all that is the, the investors saying, oh, wizards lied to us. They tricked us. They told us it was going to be so scarce. Well, boo-hoo. They took a running start and kicked you square in the nuts with the Eternal Masters reprint after you paid two seventy a box to sit on them. Now it's worth like one sixty a box. Oops. And then they like backed up, like did like a cartoon like foot burnout and then kicked his square in the nuts again by um passively exaggerating the amount of plane chase that would be going around. Honestly, I hope with like Modern Masters 2017 they find a way to like kick them in the face while they're down. Screw the investors. They're a detriment to the game. I hate them. And the more money they lose, the better, because that means they'll take all their hoarded crap that's artificially increased in price and liquidate it. That's funny to me. So what do you guys think? Am I spot on with this, or is there any details I don't know, which honestly wouldn't surprise me. I don't follow WPN crap because I'm not involved in it in any way. And if you think I'm right, if you think that's what Wizards is doing on purpose and Plane Chase was a Trojan horse, do you agree with it? Do you think that was the right way to handle the situation? Let me know down in the comment section, and I'll see you guys next video. See you guys next video.